This year we mark 25 years since the end of uh, the fall of the Berlin Wall, the end of the Cold War. But we have seen the Cold War end with a very cold and separate peace, as we see in our relations today. The Cold War ended with a settlement of the Second World War's problems. <laughs> the Cold War ended with a settlement of the borders of Germany and the unfinished business of the Second World War. There was a surge of movement towards greater diplomatic engagement between the U.S. and Russia at the end of the, of the Cold War on economic issues to cooperation in space. But there was not much reconciliation between the U.S. and Russia. There was not DDR, as we've seen used in other post-conflict scenarios. There was no Truth and Reconciliation Commission, no transparency, no accountability and public apology for crimes done or acknowledgement of harms done during the war. There were no systems to reintegrate former foes. There was no symbolic politics to build a wider and deeper public support for peace with Russia, either between the U.S. and Russia or between Russia and the former uh, communist states or, or neighboring states. And we see, we see the tragedy of that today in relations between Russia and the neighbors. After more than 45 years of stories, for example, of culture in politicians vilifying the Russians, there was no cultural engagement after the end of the Cold War, no Sesame Street characters, no action movie franchises, building public support for the idea of the good Russian, our friend, okay? We did that after the Second World War. We engaged with German culture and people. We engaged with the Japanese culture and people to make reconciliation between our countries real and durable. Last Pearl Harbor Day, I had the um, uh, opportunity to be in Pearl Harbor and to see the wreaths of flowers that were delivered by the Japanese to commemorate our reconciliation. That's what the, the note said. <laughs> to commemorate the reconciliation of our peoples. We did not engage in that job after the end of the Cold War, and we need to engage in that job. Deeper arms control, deeper disarmament needs deeper relationships. So in peace building terms, this is a, these are standard tools of DDR, disarmament, demobilization, reintegration, and reconciliation, this building of right relationships. We did some disarmament, we did get to lower levels, um, we did a little demobilization, but not much, uh, because thankfully the end of the Cold War did not end with foreign military occupation without the Big Bang that we had feared. Uh, that's the good news. The bad news is that it ended with our force structures pretty much in that same hair trigger alert uh, posture. Uh, as Des Brown has, no, has, has discussed. So we did a little bit of the first two Ds of DDR, but we really did not do that last R. And that's what's needed to get to deeper levels of disarmament. Uh, that's most of what remains uh, for us. So there are new and continued cooperative activities that really need to be given greater emphasis, whether these are activities in nuclear safety, in counterproliferation, the proliferation security initiative. Uh, there's a track record on cooperative engagement, both between the Russians and the US, so the megatons to megawatts programs, the, the historic uh, cooperative threat reduction program. But that needs to be expanded beyond the bilateral approach so that if you have a frozen period of politics, all of this comes to a screeching halt. You need more people engaged and use more multilateral frameworks to be able to continue the momentum when you have a period of frozen politics. Increasing the outreach and participation to countries such as South Africa and Argentina that gave up their nuclear weapons programs would ground these multilateral conversations in the connections between nuclear reductions and greater resources available for development. These countries have already walked this path, and they have much to offer. Increasing that multilateral capacity, that sharing and cooperation and coordination should be pursued across a wide variety of issue areas, not just the narrow nuclear issues. Issues from foreign consequence management to humanitarian assistance and disaster relief uh, to a cooperation of militaries and governments and NGOs and religious actors. That can deepen and widen our bench and build these muscles for multilateral cooperation. We have to do this because, as we said, we not only have new threats emerging, but these threats are very real.